Hey folks, Internet Dude here. In this video, I want to show you some essential modifications you need to do if you own the Snowjo 80 volt two stage snow thrower. So, probably the number one complaint I would say on this unit. Now, first off, this isn't really a review of the unit. There are those types of videos out there. Maybe I'll do one at some point. But first off, the number one complaint on using this unit is the switch for turning the chute. So the first version of um, the Snowjo 80 volt had a manual crank handle. I think it was this side. I think it was over here. And uh, worked good at, at directing the chute. In this one, there's a electric switch and a motor. There's a little tiny motor down here and it drives this gear and it's it's not the best design but the really bad thing is this this switch. Now I've replaced the switch with this one. Uh, okay first I'll show you the old one. Here's the old one. So it looked like this and it had kind of a weatherproof cover over the actual switch. Now you can see the cover is uh, pretty thick and when you're wearing gloves and you're trying to use your thumb down here to push, it's actually really hard to operate. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, it's really not a very good switch. The, the, the main complaint would be this clear cover and you don't get a positive feel when you're pressing on that and uh, it's, it's hard to depress on just the right spots in there. So what I did is I went to eBay I think these are on Amazon as well. Uh, I'll, I'll find a link, I'll put it in the description, but this kind of switch here, it, uh, it sticks out. It's also a weatherproof switch. You see there's kind of a rubber boot there, but you can easily operate it with gloves on, very easily. You're not trying to push in through this weather thing into a tiny, tiny part of the switch. Like the whole thing is rocking. So you need a kind of a specific switch. Um, it's fairly easy to take out. You just use a screwdriver. You put it in the top here. There's two tabs on the top and two on the bottom. And then it pops out. Don't disconnect all the wires. Just disconnect them one by one. Put them on the new switch in the right order. Put it and just push it back in. But this by far would be the number one change to make if you own a Snowjo 80 volt. So the second thing uh, that I would say it's kind of a complaint of mine anyway might not really bother you but when you come over uh, and again you it has to do with the controls that you use so the switch over here would be this side so the issue is that in order to operate the auger down there uh, this is the auger switch you need to be able to press in this little button see so you got to push that button in and then push down. If you just push down on here, it won't operate the auger. But you need to push that in. And again, same thing, when you're wearing gloves and it's cold out and you're operating, it's, uh, it's tougher to push that in with your thumb and then do this, you know, this action with your hand. And once it's down, you can move your, your uh, thumb off of there. But as soon as you release, that pops back up and it doesn't work. So what I did, so I just grabbed a couple of simple washers and I put them on my bench grinder and just ground them down just a bit just to make them fit in here. So in my case, I found that two worked best. So I just take them and I just kind of push them in here. I might have to do them one at a time. Let's see here. Okay, there's one. See, it's kind of holding itself in there. Put the other one in, maybe that one's just a little bit tighter. Yeah. There. So there's two washers. Uh, it's just a snug fit. I'm not going to like glue it in or anything. Um, so put them in there. That depresses the button uh, for you or the safety override automatically. So you can simply just press down like that to operate the auger. So both of those to me are just usability issues that are easy fixes. This switch, I forget the exact price I paid, but it was under 20 bucks. A couple of washers cost you uh, next to nothing. You probably even have some. 
So the third thing that uh, I found kind of annoying is when you're operating this unit, snow tends to shoot out between this area here, where you can direct the shoot, the output of the snow, and the upright thing. So what I did uh, is I simply took some foil tape, like you'd use on ducts, and I put a piece on the back here. So, because what normally happens is the snow comes up here and it really gets bounced off of here and some of it just kind of shoots in all directions, but most of it, well, not all directions, but you know, most of the snow comes up out the chute like it's supposed to, but putting a piece of tape there lets me operate the, the height of the chute, you see? And uh, it, it, gets, it, it means there's a lot less snow coming back out of there. So we'll see like how long that's going to hold up. So far it's doing well. I mean, I could switch to a duct tape or I could switch to another tape, but the, the uh, aluminum foil tape uh, has been working well. So just another recommendation, if you have this uh, electric snow thrower is, well, you shouldn't use it a lot for heavy snow. I find it's not the best for heavy snow, but um, regardless of what kind of snow you typically get, take some silicone spray and spray this whole area in here and the area in the back there where the auger is. I think that's called the auger. So spray this area down with like a silicone spray and then as well inside that chute there. And what that's going to help do is eliminate clogging, especially on that heavier snow. It's going to help uh, just help shoot the snow out better. And the other recommendation I have is to change out the skid shoes. Down here, uh, you can tell, if you own one of these, you'll know that's not factory. What's normally there is a metal um, skid shoe. And when I bring this in and stuff, like uh, I just prefer to have the plastic because this makes a lot of grinding. And you can see it's metal and it gets rusty and it gets worn down. Um, it is reversible, you can take it off and, and get more life out of it, but I feel um, just the extra length of this um, and the plasticness of it, it's just going to not be damaging on anything. And This has been working quite well. This is just a universal kit of a skid shoe, and uh, I'll also put a link for that in the uh, description below. So like I said, this isn't really a review video, but uh, it is kind of a tip video on if you already have this thing, how can you make it better? And I hope you found the tips helpful. Um, if you do have any questions about the switch, the skid shoes, or anything else about this unit, by all means, leave me a comment below, drop a question down there. Uh, maybe you have some other tips on something I haven't done. And, you know, maybe I'm missing something. I'd, I'd sure like to hear about that. Oh, the other thing here, you might notice I'm missing that little mini shovel plastic thing. It's horrible crap, and it fell off, and, yeah, I don't even use it. But uh, overall, uh, I like this unit. I plan on doing a video once we get a little more snow, just kind of showing you uh, how well it works, because maybe you're thinking about buying one, and you're uh, just watching some videos. So... I do intend to do another video, but uh, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing and check out my other videos. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.